We are alive, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us today. This is Teal with the Arcane Bear. In our ever quest to find new and interesting things, the guild and gaming space has been exploding and a new workforce has been developing. We ran into Will Dean, the co-founder and CEO of Rainmaker. Now, Will, it's great to have you on the show today. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. It's great to be here. I appreciate you giving me the time. Yeah, these are always great learning opportunities for me. In my earlier years, I was more cynical about in investing, but here I just like to explore an adventure and, and leave a lot of the controversy to the side and, and see what interesting things visionaries are looking at. So let's start, let's start with telling us who you are, and then we'll go to Rainmaker Games after. Yeah, for sure. So uh, my name is Will Dean. I've been an entrepreneur my whole life. Um, I've sold two companies before. I actually sold my last company about six months ago. Um, I've been in the crypto space since 2017, but really the, the crypto space uh, towards the end of 2020, when we saw utility finally come out and uh, by utility, I mean, you know, actual people making money on blockchain uh, by way of video games. Um, so fast forward to today, you know, I'll dive into that in a second, but that's a little background on myself. Um, great. Yeah. The, the play to earn sector has been such an interesting one. It provided a new a level of social impact, which has always been an interest to the bear family to begin with. And then again, to see this unique playful route come about, um, let's, let's drop in. Tell us about the journey of Rainmaker games so far. Yeah, for sure. So, um, a long time ago, I had a few call centers overseas in the Philippines. And so when um, Axie Infinity came out and I, I was catching wind of it, uh, I really understood the culture there. And, um, you know, I, I took a look at the game and I understood the game mechanics. Basically, what it is, is um, you buy in-game assets, you play the games in the game, and then you can earn money from that. Um, and so what we did was we initially started by building a guild, which we kind of front the money for the players in our, in our uh, community. And then they're able to make money from that. Um, and we just kept building and building and building. And fast forward to today, we have about 1200 players. Um, we do very well on the revenue side, but we also realized um, that there was no infrastructure tools in this space, right? And what I mean by that is there was no way to vet players, you know, what kind of skill sets they have, what are you good at? Um, the barrier to entry was super high, meaning that um, it, it costs a lot to buy those in-game assets now. And so you have a lot of people in this space, um, in developing countries, especially saying, hey, I'd love to be a gamer. I'd love to play these games, but I don't have the monetary needs or and or like I have never played games before to do this. And so we're solving a couple of problems. Um, one of the biggest problems is we're, we're creating a platform to allow anybody in the gaming space to join, go through training, level up and kind of get guild certified or prepared to be sponsored um, from somebody that might have the monetary needs to, to get them those assets. Yeah, this has been one of the interesting developments too. The scholars and the guilds, these seem to start to look like the potential of new kind of cutting edge esports teams as things develop. And we're really only witnessing kind of one game and the, the development of other games are, 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 are surely coming. Let's talk a little bit about how Rainmaker Games plans to expand on that, that scholar idea and the expansion here. Because again, this is, this is a type of a development of a scalable workforce. So it's a really yeah. interesting topic. And um, so let, yeah, let's get into that area a little bit. Totally. So, so, you know, it's really cool to have a guild and to build that ecosystem and the community. And we have, you know, like I think over, over 40,000 community members. Um, but what we really saw was a place to connect guilds gamers and games right there's no landscape now like netflix you know you log in your netflix account you can switch between movies different networks you can do a lot of things uh, that's not built out in this space in the web3 space and so we decided okay there's millions and there will be hundreds of millions of players that want to join this landscape let's give them a home let's also give them the opportunity to connect with guilds right so we're very synergistic to guilds we've partnered with a bunch of guilds we want to get these players the opportunity to earn more money so they're plugged into our platform and then on the other side of it is the games right so there's as you probably know there's tons of games popping up right now so Axie infinity was the first mover but now you're seeing even big players like ubisoft and riot games come in with billions of dollars trying to build out these you know nft gaming or utility gaming uh, on, on top of the blockchain and so um, there's a lot of money coming into space. There needs to be a platform where people can come, even if they don't you know, know how to play and also get the training to get them ready to be part of a guild or to join a game. 
Yeah, this is a, one of the other interesting developments because I've never been really big into video games myself. You, you know, uh, first off, Pootie Pie. Uh, if if, you, if you, everyone doesn't know who Pootie Pie is, you definitely have to check him out. If you're on YouTube, you've never seen Pootie Pie. It's almost a sin, I would say, technically. But <laughs> his evolution of people watching people play video games, uh, Ninja, there's a bunch of these gamers, and it always surprised me. But there's a fair amount of technique. I remember the first time someone brought the Axie Affinity game to us, they're showing us the technique, and they're managing maybe 10 to 20 players uh, as, a, as an, as an uh, income stream for themselves by, by doing uh, exactly this. So tell us a little bit about how, how the in-game revenue sh streams are looking at being shared, the, the DAO potentials for these types of ideas, and the social kind of plus platform that, that you guys are working on here. Yeah, for sure. I think I think uh, what's interesting about Web3 is there has to be a social element, right? I think if you look at Web2 games and a lot of the games that were built before, it was like you and your console, and that was pretty much it. And then it started to be, you know, be connected to the internet. And so you were able to play games with other people across the internet. Um, now we're kind of morphing into this. It's very community driven, right? You want to be part of a community that's also part of a game and share ideas and kind of you feel like you're part of a family in this sense. And then that kind of leads into the DAO model, right? So um, we have, our token has a lot of utility behind it. And one of the things is uh, the profits that we make as a platform and the guild go back to buying the token from the marketplace and then giving it to the community. So we take a percentage of our profits and say, hey guys, here's, here's X percent, take this, you can burn it, you can stake it, you can send it to all the players for rewards. Um, and that's basic, you know, that's for the token holders. That's how we kind of include the community. And we're, we want to evolve even more from a DAO aspect. But yeah, I mean, I just think that this landscape is going to change a lot of things. Um, it's very, very community driven. As you probably know, in this space, everybody is, is just, they feel like they're part of a, a community or family. Like when I get on Twitter and everybody says, you know, GM for good morning, it's kind of like you're just part of something. And so I think that's... Uh, it's very, very similar to that, the dot com boom and how that kind of felt. And so it's a really exciting time, especially for the gamers. Yeah, the participation and reward system. This is one of the things I really liked about Bitcoin, too, is that you were rewarded for early participation. I have a, a friend. We had the Splinterlands CEO on a, a little while ago, um, uh, Agroad, and we had a great chat with him and just witnessing the development. Yes, of community, the family, the orientation, again, the fact that you have social communities in the Philippines that are making two to three times the average wage sometimes through these games, a, a real development that we, you know, first off, I didn't see coming. So do you want to explain maybe the roadmap to the expansion of Rainmaker over the next six to 12 months and what, what that will, what that's going to look like for everyone? Yeah, for sure. So, so like I mentioned before, we started as a guild, we quickly turned into this platform that we're connecting games, uh, guilds and, uh, and gamers. And so we're in closed beta right now. We have a little over 100,000 signups waiting to jump onto our platform. Um, and we hope to, to like open up our, our beta at the end of December, early January. Once we get that out, do a lot of testing and refinement. We have a ton of partnership conversations with these games we're talking to right now. So I won't say any names, but um, if you're a game, you know, why wouldn't you want to be plugged into what we're building, right? You get access to gamers. We have this big data pool and community of gamers that would love to join new games. If you guys are going to do airdrops, well, guess what? Like our community would love those to come onto your platform and, and play your games. And so um, that's kind of like the first Q1 of, of what's next. Then we roll out our NFT marketplace. I won't go too deep into that, but um, there is going to be a, a, a time and a place where you know, inoperability across games potentially happens. I don't know if it's going to happen in the next year, in the next three years, but we want to be there and to allow people to kind of give their assets across, uh, you know, across the world, basically. Somebody in Indonesia can give, you know, um, put it in a staking contract and get, give it to somebody in, uh, you know, the Philippines or Argentina. And so um, we want to build that out. And so our team is, is definitely working on some really cool things, but version one is getting our launch or getting our uh, ecosystem and platform built and launched. Uh, and what blockchain system are you guys building on? Is it, are these ERC 20s? Yeah. So our tokens on ERC 20, but I always say that we're chain agnostic. And what I mean by that is we almost have a web two product with an ERC-20 token, uh, we're bridging to BSC as well because it's, you know, the swap fees. But 
all the games are on different platforms, right? They're on different chains, right? There's some on Solana, BSC, Polygon. There's just so many different ones. So to allow our players to plug into those games, we kind of can be this focal point where we don't necessarily need to be on those chains. We can just provide the swap for our token. So one of our utilities is that if you play in a game and you want uh, – you know, to cash out or to swap, we'll, we'll give you an incentive to swap your token for rain token, right? We might give you an extra 10%. We'll hold your in-game currency. You could hold rain token and you can take that and cash out for fiat. So I like to say we're chain agnostic. We're launching on ERC-20, um, but we'll kind of see where the future holds. Yeah, the part of this here too, the development of, of the esports team, you know, through our research, um, cause I, again, I'm not savvy to, well, even the tech sector necessarily, but, uh, seeing the middleman that's been put up between the player and the video game, we've seen this in, in other industries that happened in the music industry. Uh, I was not a, again, not privy to the video game industry recently, but we see this, that happened in the, in the esports teams that there's a, a big middleman between the gamer and the, the games itself. And what I like is that these start to. Yeah, democratize for, for the incentive of the player from a very early aspect of the game to, to own part of these, uh, these in-game assets as well. Do you feel that the voting structure and the DAO is geared towards like incentivizing the people that are not just playing the game, but also creating content like these ninjas or PewDiePies who really helped I guess pioneer the idea that people would watch other people play video games like <laughs> a surprising turn of events to me but for obviously people like it right so yeah yeah i think there's so much value ac across the content creators not just the gamers right so um depending on how we roll out the dow i want to create incentives across everything all stakeholders right because previous to most businesses it's like oh if you make the money like you're the person that everybody looks at here You've got content creators, you've got guilds, you've got games, you've got players. Um, everybody can win if, if they work together. And so our DAO, what we're working on right now is to not just give token holders uh, the ability to kind of get their hands in what we're building, but also community and, and content creators. So there's a lot of stuff that we're working on. Um, I can't I can't give it all away just yet, but we have some really cool stuff that's coming out that I think will uh, you know, bring the attention to our platform. Again, we want to be like, when you think of play to earn, you, you think of Rainmaker, right? And to like achieve that, um, we have to include everybody. Yeah, yeah, these um, these esports teams is really what the guilds are starting to look like to me. It's just yeah. uh, under a different brand, again, too, the, you're seeing a more collaborative effort. Whereas in, in older style esports team, it's a non-zero sum game. You're looking for winners and losers, the game here yeah. necessarily. Whereas this is not always the case. You have a much more collaborative effort uh, quite often. One of the things I've been interested in is the potential for the in, like in-game, like let's say I have assets in Axies. Is there a way for me to contribute my Axies assets to the guild and earn based off the assets that I own? So you're, you're hitting the nail on the head, which is what V2 is going to be, right? So I think what DeFi did really well was it allowed people to take the money that they had and earn APY, right? Earn interest on their money. They could stake it and they could earn interest. In this play to earn space, there's not really been an opportunity for an investor yet, right? And so if you own these assets and you're not playing with these assets, are they just kind of sitting in your wallet? You know, what can you do with them? Um, the version two and where I see a lot of this morphing and something we're working on as well is that you should be able to take your assets and lend them out to a guild if you don't want to manage the player, right? Like if you don't want to manage players or you want, you know, you want some opportunity in this space, but you don't want to do the legwork, you, there's absolutely should be a place for where you can take, you know, your assets, your NFTs and lend them out. And so we're working on that. I think that we are so early with this play to earn space, right? Like actually prove that you can make money playing video games, um, but like the iterations that are coming, like, you know, how the guilds are turning into DAOs, right? How people are being able to lend, how fractionalization of NFTs are, are coming about. So there's a lot of cool things that are coming. Definitely being able to take, you know, in-game assets and lending them out without actually having to do any sort of management is one of the, the, the bigger goals that I think everybody's trying to get to in probably the next six months. Yeah, because I got some axes that are just chilling there doing nothing. Spitting, man. Yeah. yeah. They got to be getting played. Exactly, exactly. And that's, and that's where I think actually funny, I think that um, over time, we're going to see the definition of what a guild is change. Um, and so part of it, right, like, 
right now, if you were just to give your axes to a player and not check in or not kind of see if they were using them, you know, maybe if you found somebody really, really great, everything would go smooth. Um, but as we know, we're all human. Um, there's chances that maybe they don't, you know, use them one week or, you know, these things that aren't necessarily micromanaged. And I think that guilds as a uh, construct are going to shift a little bit to where they can be this um, place that almost, whether it's manage or build a community or do training, there's a lot of things that guilds are gonna turn into. And so the use case you're giving the example of where, hey man, I have a ton of in-game assets because I know you know I know they're gonna go up in value, but I also want to, to use them, to yield from them. So what do I do with these? Um, that's, a, that's, that's a problem that's starting to come up with all these games. Um, and there will be a solution where you can take those assets, stake them, if you will, uh, with uh, a guild and get them get them put to work. Yeah, that, these are one of the exciting areas that I've been thinking about as well. Um, so here's a kind of a curveball question then. We've gone off a strong point. Do you feel at any point that the games are going to try to do the majority of the infrastructure of revenue sharing or in-game asset sharing and uh, let's say pop the bubble of the guild space in the future? Or is it do you think there's a large enough moat around this particular sector through the community building uh, and the multi-game assets that it, the, the guilds will thrive over the individual in-game lending, yep. revenue sharing, et cetera? Well, I'll say this. So I, I hope everybody tries, right? Because if everybody tries to do that and achieve that, you have this kind of, everybody has to get better. So I'm, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur at heart. And um, when I see, I don't want to call it competition because I don't think that is a really nice word in web three, but if you have somebody that's trying to solve that problem, and I think Fort F O R T E, I think they're like building their own complete ecosystem and you have everybody trying to build their own metaverse. What's going to happen is either one person's going to really win and, and everybody's going to connect to that, or there's going to be some sort of like open network. Um, and, and everybody's going to have to change to adopt to the player. What I really like about Web3 is that it is for the player, right? So if you think about it, um, the way businesses are going to be successful or, or games is because they're catering to the needs of the player. And that goes the same for guilds, right? So for example, if, if whether it's Axie or another game comes up with all the infrastructure tools, everything that a player wants, um, you know, even like an off-ramp inside of their game, Guilds aren't going to go away. They just have to adopt to a different style of, of, um, of value, value add, right? Like you have, a, you have people that trust you, you have a community. So maybe there's an opportunity for you to launch financial services on the back end. Wait, you know, we have 100,000 guild members. You know, maybe they don't all have credit cards or maybe they don't have, you know, insurance. Maybe all of a sudden you become like the HR um, for the players, right? And so there's all these ideas and, and you have to adapt um, because that's the space we're living in. Yeah, this is one of the things that I had started to recognize recently, too, was that, you know, you, it's, I, I, I was like, there's a Twitter channel I follow, it's called VC Brags, they're always kind of making fun of like poignant VC ideas, and one of them is when, when founders always compare things to like Grab or Uber or, Tw or, or Airbnb or something like, oh yeah, we're the Airbnb of this, or whatever. Oh, what's, interesting, <laughs> what's interesting about the guilds here is that you, or at least for myself, I'm starting to see the development of something that is similar to a, a grab version where it's like, they're putting in hours, working, earning revenue. You have, and, in, and you're basically lending out the cars to the drivers effectively, right? So you have this much higher yield relationship. Um, the, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's really fascinating to see these conversations grow. So um, how do we stay in touch and, and follow uh, the like Rainmaker? When are you guys launching? Yeah, so so uh, you can follow us at on our Instagram. So at Rainmaker Gaming, um, Twitter, Rainmaker Games, uh, our Telegram, which I'll send to you afterwards, which you can tag, uh, which is Rainmaker Games. Um, yeah, I mean, we're launching the platform at the end of December. We have our token events, our auction on the 17th of December. So um, that's going to be big for us. And then, uh, and then it's go time. It's go time. We've already been building in the shadows. Uh, so we're really, really excited. We have millions of people that are kind of looking at us and we're excited to, to change this landscape. And uh, where, whereabouts are you guys launching? So we're doing a fair auction launch on Copper Launch. Um, similar to what Merit Circle did, Unix Gaming, some of these other uh, bigger brands. Um, and yeah, we're super excited about it. You, you guys have uh, some news that came out today. Do you want to tell us a little bit about some of the people you're, you're working with? 
Yeah, for sure. So today our investor list um, announcements came out. So Animoca Brands, Alameda, uh, Coin Fund, Polygon, CMS, Sky Venture Partners, Draft Ventures, and the list goes on. A lot of really, really great, um, uh, great backing, uh, and you know, great partners. They've made made a lot of uh, opportunities for us, and um, I think we got into Decrypt. I think we're going to get into CoinDesk. I think we have a lot of these these press hits coming out. So super excited about that. Awesome! Congratulations. Yeah, some of our our friends out there. Um, so let's, let's go a little bit more conceptual, I guess, for the last bit here, you know, a, a lot of the people that follow my channel, they know very specifically venture capital has a high potential for failure, but an enormous amount of upside within this ecosystem. What's the next three, five, 10 years look like for Rainmaker? How, yeah. How do we get to that decade vision? Yeah. So, you know, look, I, I think big man, I'm, I'm kind of an all or nothing kind of guy. Like I burn the ships. Um, I think if we solve one problem and the problem is how do we onboard all the players in the world to Rainmaker, right? Like we can do a lot of things. And I think that we're actually solving that. I think by, by way of giving opportunities to join our platform and go through training and level up and get access to these games, we're solving that massive problem. And it starts with the players. If we do that, ooh, there's a lot of things that we can do, right? Um, I won't go into too many specifics, but, you know, when you have critical mass um, on the demand side, you know, you can do a lot of things with the gaming side. I mean, like I mentioned earlier, like one of the things we've really been talking about, and I don't want to be the entrepreneur that gives 5,000 ideas, but, you know, I, I think that there's something to be said about how this kind of play to earn space helped blockchain just kind of get its massive bull run again. Um, and it started with developing countries having an opportunity, right? And so when you think about that ideology of having an opportunity as a developing country and the shift that started to happen when on top of blockchain, you start to think like what other things can we help with in developing countries by way of the community we're building, right? So I go back to that financial services question. It's just an idea, but it's, there's so many things that um, you can bring to the table to help people across this world. And I think gaming is the doorway to it. So without going into too many specifics, we will be this massive play to earn platform. I think that we will be the play to earn platform that connects guilds and games. Um, but then if you go past that in the next 10 years, man, I just think that when you think about us, um, it's, it's, you know, we're, we're part of the family because we're helping you with so many other things. And so I don't want to go into too many details because, you know, who knows where the road's going to take us, but again, solving one problem gets us there. Um, okay. So let's, we'll stay on the, the abstraction layer here. Um, yeah. Out of the, the current gaming industry that you see developing the play to earn sector, which are the ones you think have the most likelihood of success um, that are on the table at the moment? Yeah. I mean, I mean, Axie is still, I think, going to be one of the most successful. They're, they're like the, they started it, right? So they have the critical mass. They have the adoption. It's still the best game to earn. I know Splinterlands is going to do very, very well. Um, there's another one that came out recently. I'm, uh, the name is, is, um, is going to be, it's, I think it's something, a, um, it's a tournament game in Asia that just came out. I got to think about it, but I think they have over a million users already. Um, and I think Riot Games is going to do really well. Um, I think they're going to do really well. I've talked to some people with some advisors that, that are there. And so, um, I think there's going to be a couple of winners. Uh, and I think that it's going to be the guys that, that take care of everybody. So if you're doing first person shooters and you're not taking care of, you know, players that want to come into this space that don't know how to play games as well, um, you're going to have a hard time getting critical mass and adoption. So, Axie did a really good job at saying anybody can play this game and make money. That was like one of the key elements of why Axie did so well. One of the other things that we've seen develop in this sector is a kind of a learn to earn strategy within the ecosystem. Are you guys incorporating a learn to earn strategy with say the content and the, uh, the token of Rainmaker as well? Yes. So uh, we're working closely with a gaming partner who has a learn to earn uh, thing that they have built um, to understand their in-game mechanics, because we want to apply that to how players can come and uh, level up per se 
in the training. So it's absolutely something that we're looking at. I, I, I love the idea. It's you're gamifying people learning and, and, and that's the best way to get people to have adoption, right? Incentivize them to learn. Um, so yeah, it, I, think it's, I think it's probably one of the big next waves. We'll see how, it, how the market takes it, um, but it's definitely very interesting and I like it as an in-game you know, kind of tool. Yeah, uh, we saw Coinbase and Coin Market Cap have tried to or had, had included these one-off traditions with like uh, XLM or something, or learn about Chainlink. Here, you get X. This is a really smart idea to onboarding. But you know, I, I agree with you. I think largely the sentiment now is that this is an on-ramp for the billion people without needing the regular bank accounts or traditional um, uh, on-ramps that were were, were necessary. No, oh, sorry, the electricity is flipped on and off there. <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah, that no, makes sense. So there's a, a, a huge potential here as well. Um, well, Will, I know we've got a both big day ahead of us. I think we've covered uh, most, of, most of the key, uh, poignant ideas for now. We're always interested to have you back again in the future. There'll be an article that we've got out, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for Rainmaker Games that will be down here below when the post. I'm not actually sure what day it is technically while you're watching this. So thank you for making it this far. Give us a thumbs up if you like this content. Um, as Will had said earlier, all of the Rainmaker links for Discord, Twitter, Telegram, et cetera, will be down below. Always while you're participating, learning here, go slow. There's always someone trying to like do some type of scam from some type of Discord bot or something somewhere. Uh, it's not that it would come from Rainmaker games, but just be aware, take your time, be patient when you're doing things. Exit, getting it right the first time is more important than getting it wrong twice. <laughs> <laughs> so totally. just go slow don't get too excited there's no reason to FOMO take your time uh Will I've had a great time chatting with you today uh, I'll give you the, the the last four for any final calls to actually want to share with the Bear family awesome well I really appreciate the time and yeah just like I said before follow us on Twitter at Rainmaker Gaming um and you'll get everything there and then our website is rmg.io awesome Will I really appreciate it today I'll keep you on for a few minutes after the show here but Bear family thank you for joining us really appreciate you guys support um, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you in the next episode.